Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we're gonna see the possibilities of a general AI agent, Manus.im. This is a AI agent versus something like a chat screen where you give input to chat GPT, you get a lot of ideas, you get a lot of content. The difference is that an AI agent can actually execute the tasks for you. So let's start with the task. So we're just gonna play this open ended. So what I'm gonna say is I have a YouTube channel about investing in India. Let's make a specific. I want you to find the most popular videos on YouTube about index investing internationally and create ideas that can be used for my audience in India. Seeking financial freedom. So this is something that I would do manually. Like I would look at what are the top videos about investing in the US or internationally and then see what which ones of those can be used for the Indian audience because I do have a channel about personal finance in India. The good thing about the agent is you can just give the task and then you can watch it working. So you can also see the methodology that it's following. So Manus is working research popular international index investing videos. So it's created a task list. So it's very organized in that sense. This is how a general virtual assistant, like a real virtual assistant would work as well. So it very easily replaces the virtual assistants for business owners and entrepreneurs. So Manus is working research popular international index investing videos. So it says initializing the computer. So what this means is it actually uses Linux and it opens a browser, a viewing browser. You see that it's browsing youtube.com slash some. So it's, it's browsing a video, but just to, just to know like how it actually uses the browser. This is the way that it's different from something like a chat GPT, right? So it's made this task list. So once I do this, then I will analyze the video content and identify the key themes. Then I will research the Indian index investing landscape and regulations. This is something I would do manually because there are things that people would talk about on their YouTube channels, but they may not apply to India as much. Then generate content ideas adapted for the Indian audience and then deliver the research findings and content ideas to user. User in this case is me, the Manus user. Now it's going to some YouTube channels. It's uh, spending good amount of time like researching on the browser. Once you do that again and again, it might hit a ceiling where YouTube or these social media platforms think it's a bot uh, because it is. So there are definitely limitations to what it can achieve, but let's see what it comes up with. So based on the quality of ideas, we can understand how the work is. So yeah, finally it's delivered the files to me and these are the files that it's come up with. So one is the analysis of the popular international investing videos the, and then it's come up to the Indian landscape. So it's learned about the Indian landscape and finally the content ideas, which are decent ideas. And based on the fact that it's coming from actual research, they make it more, you know, it makes it more valuable for the audience. But that's about it. I mean, it was not bad. Let's go into a new task. And um, I have this coffee brand, which is weirdbrew.in. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to create a clone of the website weirdbrew.in. I'm just doing this for fun. Again, you could create a clone of your competitor's website of any website which is public, but let's see what it does. So I will create a clone of the website weirdbrew.in for you. This could be slightly more tricky because it's a Shopify website, but I just want to see how it goes. With a, with a simple HTML CSS website, it's a very straightforward task, but let's see. So it's created the task list, which I love, like it's an organized way of doing things. It also teaches you like how to manage a task when you're yourself working on a task like just creating the simple milestones. So it's analyzing the original website, plan the website structure and design, gather the assets and the content. So I'm assuming it's gonna scrape the assets and the content from my website, build the website clone, test it. This is the beautiful thing about Manus that it can actually test things for you and then deploy and deliver the finest website. So now we're gonna see the browser. Look at the computer. So it's gone to weirdbrew.in, which is my website. Again, I could have given it any website, but I've just given it my website because I don't want to publicly scrape anyone else's website or duplicate anyone else's website for the tutorial. So it actually saved the image with the image names and then it started building the clone. So it created this index.html. Now it's working on the style.css. This is the index.html. This is actually very cool because I was, um, actually planning to turn my Shopify website into a static website because I don't use the checkout functionality anyway. So I don't have to pay for the monthly subscription anymore. I could probably just host this entire website once this is done. 
let's go to the computer so it's open the website okay now it's attempting to deploy the service located at da -da -da to the public network please confirm if you okay i mean i don't care at this point i mean if it can scrape my website or any other website there's nothing to hide really so let's deploy the static product so this is what i was imagining as well it would take the website and then it would make it into a static website which makes sense because actually my website doesn't have any dynamic functionality but i know people who create dynamic websites with user interaction features etc i'm sure it's pretty capable of doing that as well creating a clean project directory for deployment now this is all stuff that you would have to deal with a developer in the past like a someone who knows linux and can use terminal and create all of these commands and all that but now it's all done by a agent so it's beautiful deploy and deliver the final website and be mindful that we are still on like a new free account so we haven't paid anything for this so deploy and deliver the website let's see the files so you've got the index, you've got the style, you've got the website link. So this is the question that it was asking, can I deploy this website on this place? It's deployed it in its own server. We have not paid for hosting or anything. It's just deployed it. And this is what it's done. It's not bad. It's uh, got my images. It's got my links. It's got the content. Of course, some of the images have not been, have not come out properly. So that's something that I can manually replace the image files because I do have those image files. It's got the content right. It's got the sections right. It's got some of the images right. It's got the icons. And uh, yeah, many of the images have actually come out fine. The inside pages are not done. So we, that's something that we can continue to work on. But this shows you how it can clone a website and actually write code for you. You could also ask it to like create a website from scratch. So in the first a uh, task we saw how it can find and research videos and then create video ideas in the second one we saw cloning now let's try some scraping let's find entrepreneurs let's find entrepreneurs in the fitness space in indonesia and put together their information in a sheet I would like to do an outreach to them. So I have an idea I want to pitch to entrepreneurs in the fitness space in Indonesia. You could instead say investors in Singapore or VCs in the Silicon Valley or IT firms in Bangalore. But I'm just taking this example to find entrepreneurs in the fitness space in Indonesia. Let's look at the task list. It's going to work to research. It's going to compile and organize the entrepreneur information. It's going to deliver results to user. Now, scraping has to be a part of this because at some point it'll have to scrape the information of these people from somewhere on the internet. But we're going to see how it can legally actually do that. Phase one, research the fitness entrepreneurs. Again, I love this, the to-do list and then the subtasks. This is how I love to organize my work as well. So search for fitness entrepreneurs, identify key information for each entrepreneur, save the findings to a file, compile and organize the information, create a spreadsheet, populate the spreadsheet with the collected information. That's amazing. And deliver results to user, convert the spreadsheet into a user-friendly format. So that's for me. And send the compiled information to the user, which is me. Right, so it's now browsing through all of these by searching fitness entrepreneurs Indonesia. So you've got these search results. So it's going to pick up, obviously, the popular entrepreneurs, which is good for me for the outreach. But they would probably have budgets or they would probably have the network for what I'm looking to collaborate with them on, which is great. And then it's navigating to specific articles from the search result to find those entrepreneurs. So this is like a nested task, right? So it did this and it did this and then it did this. There used to be times where I would train browsers like Bardeen, for example, is a Chrome extension that I was working on using it for scraping. Then there's a lot of other browser extensions, but all of this is basically, you know, automated. So it's, it has replaced all of that. So we have some entrepreneurs here. So it's making the list. This is the name of the business, which is the company name. It's updating the task list. Let's go back. This is the company name. This is the name of the founders. This is the description of the company. So that's the information that it's got. Now I can always go back and say, you know, try to find this information, and that information additionally. But I think this is a good start. One thing that I would definitely add to this is add a link to the company's LinkedIn page as well as to the founder's LinkedIn profile, because then I can actually start to send them the message and even 
just writing the email outreach or the message on LinkedIn. You can I can ask it to personalize it and write the message for each into a column and then I can just copy that message and then send it to each of them on LinkedIn. Those will be like interesting additions to this. But it's good to see that it can do all of these kinds of tasks which a scraper bot or a scraper extension would have done. So we saw three different use cases, we saw the research, we saw the creation of the website and we saw scraping. Now, of course, these are not the only things that it does. Uh, there's a lot of examples here. So if you just scroll down, if you go on the home page, scroll down, you see turn anything into websites, create a notion project setup, website review and traffic improvement like audits, help me with the stars, design a mobile UI UX. It does pretty well with image graphic design as well. Uh, from what I've tried. So you can explore these use cases on their website as well and uh, create an app. You can create a personal app just for yourself. So me and my wife have recently created like an expense tracking app. We've used a different AI tool, uh, which is called V0. If you're interested in that, I can make a video about that as well because it gives us more options for the, for the app creation. Create a 3D gallery for paintings. So there's a lot of these use cases and I'm very excited to explore more of these. But in this tutorial, I just wanted to show you um, the basic fundamental pillars of researching, creation, and scraping that you can use Manus for. So uh, that's all for this video. I'm also going to share this link with you, which allows you to get 500 credits and me to get 500 credits if you sign up to Manus via this link. But that's all for now. See you in the next one. Bye.